I think it's very well known that more than 50% of Australia's cooperative research centres hit the clean tech sector. And we've had ongoing R&D in the sector for about 20 years. And that 20 years is now reaching a point of commercialisation into a market that has global opportunity. So I think that's a really exciting place for a venture firm like ours to be, uh, where we can really come on board with these technologies and help springboard them offshore. Uh, we think it's, Australia has a very important role in fact and I think it's been partly driven by a couple of factors. One is the fact that we have, um, we've had climate change issues for a long time. We've had very big issues around water and water resources and water management for a long time. But suddenly the rest of the world is finding out that they have that problem too. But we've been sort of trying to deal with it for a long time and that's created a lot of this new technology that's coming through. It's a difficult one given our um, coal appetite and coal really being our national sovereignty, it's our number two GDP. I think our, our role is potentially we could, we'll have some solar hot pockets, we'll maybe have some wave hot pockets and, and tidal hot pockets. I think we'll still have innovation that's competitive on a worldwide scale and I think a few things will come out. But there's a big market internally and domestically that's big enough for companies to be focused on as well to make a fair bit of money and drive exits as well, which is unusual to other technology fields in Australia where you really have to be export and outward focused. I think there's some markets that are large enough to drive exits here internally on a domestic level. I think um, you know Australia has a critical role to play. I think that through organizations like the UNPRI, a number of the super funds have become very active at sort of the highest level of, of policy and, and, um, and you know, different types of international dialogue. And so I think that's been very important. I think where we would like to see more activity would be capital flows into the sector. Um, not only here in Australia, but Australian capital going into clean tech markets outside of Australia. And there has been a little bit of a, a bottleneck, I would say, in terms of getting um, that capital into the market. I think that will change slowly over time as the investment universe continues to grow and expand. Um, and so I think the, from a capital perspective, there's a critical role to play. There's also a lot of innovation taking place here, so I think we fully expect um, some interesting technologies to come out of the Australian market. Well, I, um, we uh, globally recognise it's been very good at the R&D stage, the innovation stage, and some, some of the great global technologies we've been born here in Australia. So I hope that we can keep to keep contributing to the real intellectual property at, a, at that level. Um, we do have a bit of a gap in the commercialisation um, phase, which is a bit sad because it means that a lot of these great early innovations are going out of the uh, which still at least they can go there and continue to develop you know, not, you know, the best ones are not going to die uh, but we, we also have some very interesting because of our fabulous resources here um, opportunities that, particularly in emerging technologies like geothermal uh, because we've got some amazing products here in Australia and um, and solar thermal, just because of our solar resource. So I, I really hope that we can play a role in the commercialisation of those fabulous technologies. I think Australia has the opportunity to be a global leader, and really it has to be done outside of government policy. I think not that government policy isn't supportive, but I find that people are over-reliant on the government. And I think the government is here to help and support, but people have to deliver great companies and sustainable companies, whether or not the government is participating and stop using the government as a crutch. So I think that's the, the big differentiation. The government seems to have the right policies and putting support where they need to put it, but the private sector really has to take advantage of that and take it to the next level. So I'm a big believer in that, and I hope that the private sector lifts their game and, and takes advantage of it. Uh, I think it's one of demonstrating some leadership because if, if you look globally around all the OECD countries, which of the developed nations have really suffered environmental stress? There really isn't any that have suffered the stress. We've been suffering water scarcity stresses since the, uh, since the 70s in WA, um, you know, where the world's, one of the world's worst per capita greenhouse emitters. 
we have a dispersed population. These are all drivers of clean tech innovation and you've seen government put money behind it, um, which has then driven entrepreneurial activity as well, So, which is why we see 300 deals a year. So a lot of the good quality deals, not just in solar, which is what everybody looks at Australia for, but in other areas like water, are yet to come through and they will in the next few years. So I think it's a pretty exciting space to be in.